first thing we'll do is check our brakes. So I will release the brakes, add a little bit of power. Just so you know, RPM change, get the ground moving, pull the power back to idle, and apply full brakes. Just to make sure our brakes are working. And the pilot monitoring, well, both pilots will do the same thing. So next thing we'll do, we'll look at our line uh, on the ground, and it goes going to the left. So we'll start slowly taxiing. Now, on the ramp, you want to taxi no faster than 10 seconds between each parking spot. Uh, what that equates to is a very slow walking pace. We'll keep the power back uh, idle here. And you want to try not ride on the brakes, but you may have to apply uh, brakes every now and then to keep the aircraft at a slow speed. You want to control the speed with the power, and when you can't use power anymore to slow down, then you'll start using brakes. And notice the center line right here, it might look slightly off to you. Um, that's because it looks right to me. It's called parallax error. But what you basically want to do is try and get that center line through your right leg. But it doesn't guarantee that you won't hit anything, so you still have to watch out left to right to make sure you're not going to uh, uh, hit any obstructions on the ground. So here's this line I was talking about, the solid line and the dash line. That's the non-movement area, movement area barrier. We'll stop here. And this is where we'll contact ground control. Now all we'll do is we'll put the ground control frequency in. And before we call them, you want to get ready. You want to take out your, your a piece of paper so you can copy down the instructions. Get your pen. And airport diagram ready. So we have that ready. We know where we are here at Romeo, uh, Romeo 3. We'll go ahead and call them. I want to tell them where we are and then we're ready to taxi. Daytona ground, Riddle 182, Romeo 3, ready to taxi. Riddle 182, Daytona ground, runway 16, taxi via Echo. Riddle 182, 16 via Echo. So we got the runway and we got our taxi instruction via Echo. We copy it down to make sure we don't forget and then we brief it. We're Romeo 3, we're going to take a right on Echo. And we'll go all the way down to 16, there's no hot spots on our area and there's no runway crossings on our taxi route. Once we've uh, briefed it, we'll start taxiing, we'll clear left, clear center and clear right. We'll slowly add some power and we'll start taxiing. Now the winds are calm right now, so I, wouldn't, uh, I don't have to put any wind correction on my ailerons, but if the winds weren't calm, I'd have to put uh, wind correction using my ailerons. For instance, right now, as you see, the last position of the windsock was a, to me right now, the windsock looks like a right or a left quartering tailwind. So if I have a left quartering tailwind, I will position the ailerons like this. That way to keep the, the left air on down, so it keeps the wing from lifting up. Now, there's no technical, there's not an actual speed restriction on taxiing. You want to taxi at a speed that is comfortable to you and safe. Uh, what that means is that if I apply full brakes, that I will be able to stop the aircraft without losing control if something ran in front of me or let's say an aircraft cut in front of me. So, I want to keep it slow enough, and it also depends on the type of aircraft, the type of environment you're flying in, as well as uh, your familiar familiarity with the airport. It's on a ground system, Sky 35549, I will stop with East Ramp, would like to taxi, if we can get 25 left as possible, that'd be great. Alright, so coming up to here, we have to do a run-up to make sure the engine is working correctly. So I'll come off the center line slightly here and position the aircraft in a, in a way that the prop wash, when I start doing the run-up to check the engine, blows into the grass. So that we don't blow stones into other aircraft and we don't blow uh, any debris onto any movement areas. Oh, Parker right here, as you see the other aircraft is doing the exact same thing in front of us. We're at 1,000 RPM, and we'll pull out our checklist again. And the next thing we'll do is our before take of run-up checklist. The first thing we we'll do is set the parking brake. So we'll pull this up and turn it counterclockwise to engage it. The flight control check. So you want to make sure the flight controls are free and correct. So what we'll do is we'll take the aileron to go full left. Make sure the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down. Keep it in this position. Pull the elevator all the way back. Make sure the elevator goes up all the way to the right to make sure that it's not hitting your legs and not being stuck. Uh, as you're moving it, make sure the left aileron goes down, right aileron goes up, and all the way full forward. So we call it a box check. Make sure that your, it, the, the, aileron, the flight controls are moving the correct way as well as not hitting anything and not getting obstructed as you're moving them. Next thing we're going to do is uh, go back to our checklist. Fuel selector is on both. 
It should control full forward, so push the button in, push it full forward. And now we're going to verify that the engine magnetos are working correctly, which provides ignition to the engine. And it's going to verify that the engine is in good working order before we take off. So we'll take the throttle, and see here, at the, on the checklist it says pull up to 2,000 RPM. Slowly moving up, watch your tachometer right here. And we'll move it up to 2,000. Our magneto key right here, we'll take it and we'll take the key and we'll put it to the left now. When you move it, you're going to move it two clicks to the left, to the right magneto. And what you're going to watch is your engine RPM. And you're going to make sure the RPM doesn't drop more than 200 RPM from the position. So we'll take it two clicks, one, two, to the right magneto. And you'll notice it dropped about 70 RPM. So that's okay, that's why we're the limits. We'll take it back to both on our magnetos. Make sure it comes back and stabilizes. And now we'll check the left magneto, so one click over to the left. And you'll notice it dropped about 50 RPM. So the one dropped, we'll go back to both. One dropped 70, one dropped 50, that's 20 difference. So each one dropped less than 200, and the difference between the two drops was less than 50. So the engine magnetos are working correctly. All the engine instruments, we, we know fuel flow in the green, the oil pressure is also in the green, the oil temperature is in the green, and the vacuum system is showing a good uh, pressure. So, in all in all, the engine is working correctly. We'll pull the throttle back to idle now to make sure it idles above 675 RPM. And it does. We'll put it back up to 1,200 now and do the same lean procedure that we did when we started the engine earlier. I smooth the engine off playing, and back to a thousand. And before takeoff, run up check is complete. We'll move the airplane up now to follow the rest of the traffic in the line. So you want to add some power to get the aircraft uh, rolling, and when it is rolling, you want to pull back the power about 200 RPM, back to about 900 to 1000 RPM once it is moving, because it will move under its own power. The next thing we're going to do, uh, once we come to a complete stop, is part of the checks checklist. The next checklist is our before takeoff checklist. You notice the first thing that, the, that we have to do is our departure briefing. We pull out the weight and balance we calculated where we got the crew briefing from and you'll notice there's actually a departure briefing onto the right hand side here. So departure briefing, runway distance available, runway 16 on our in-flight guide is 6,001 feet. Runway required from our calculations was about 1,500 feet over the 50 foot obstacle, so we have more than enough runway for today's uh, takeoff. Air speeds, we will, uh, once we apply full power, We'll maintain the center line of the runway until we get to 55 knots, which is our VR rotation speed. At that point, we will increase back pressure on the on the yoke so that the nose slowly comes up and we put the nose just on the edge of the runway. Once we the, the, the wheels actually lift off the ground, then we'll start looking for the, the horizon and keep the nose, the top of the cowling, just on, on the horizon. Uh, then we'll climb out at what's what called VY, which is 74 knots, our best rate of climb. That will give us the greatest altitude gain in the shortest amount of time. And uh, once we get to about 500 feet, we'll transition to what's called a cruise climb, which is 85 knots. That will provide better vision while we're climbing out to see if there's any traffic. It'll also allow us to get better cooling over the, the engine, since our engine is air-cooled. There's no cross component because the winds are calm, and no gas factor, the winds are calm. Uh, terrain, no terrain to watch out for here in this, uh, on this runway. There's no uh, mountains and uh, no obstructions also in terms of any cranes right now that are currently in the area. Sometimes we'll find cranes if there's construction. Uh, we're not wake turbulence right now. As of now, sometimes we have to watch out for big jets like Delta and American Eagle will sometimes come through. Uh, and we have to watch out for that in case they t they've taken off prior to us taking off. Uh, we'll have to watch out for wake turbulence. And uh, we'll brief that if we do. Oh, when she, uh, noise, noise, noise abatement, sometimes we have to watch out for our neighbors, make sure that we don't bother them too much. Um, obviously, living close to the airport, there is going to be some noise, but we want to try to minimize it as much as possible. 
to help our neighbors. So for only one six, if we look at our in-flight guide, there is uh, there's noise abatement for seven right, but nothing for runway one six. Our departure plan, we're going to depart out of, uh, if we look at the MFD right here, we're going to depart out of one six. And then you're going to get us a turn either to the, since we're going north, it might give us a 290 or a 030 heading out of the shoreline or come out to the west here, depending on what type of departure area they are using. So we'll listen out for that. Once we depart out, we will fly out here to the north. Now, our practice area that we chose was the Crescent area, and that's identified if we look at our practice areas in our in-flight guide. It's identified by Lake Crescent, so we can refer to our sectional chart and look at Lake Crescent here which is this one with a hook. As long as we're close to that area, we'll be in the Crescent practice area, and that's the area we're going to. In terms of airspace that we have to watch out for, Daytona Beach's Class Charlie airspace goes up to 4,000 feet. Once we clear the area, clear the Charlie airspace up to the west, we'll make sure that we um, don't re-enter it unless we're actually talking to air traffic control uh, again. Other airspace we have to watch out for, we have restricted areas up to the west of Lake Crescent. We'll make sure we don't enter those unless they are cold, which we, we may be able to. We can we can check that they, if they're cold or not. But we're not going to the back series today. And Flagler Beach Airport right here, their airspace goes up to 1,500. You can, these numbers are coming from a sectional chart. So you look, refer to your sectional chart for these altitudes. But that's our departure plan today. We'll maintain a sterile cockpit throughout the take takeoff and emergency procedures now. In case we have a system malfunction or engine failure prior to rotation, something you want to brief uh, just so that we are on the same page of what's going to happen if we do have a, a, an issue. If the engine fails or we have a system malfunction prior to rotation, we'll pull the throttle, the pilot flying, we'll pull the throttle power to idle, maintain direction control, and apply uh, full braking, come to complete stop on the runway. At that point in time, we'll notify Daytona Tower of our, uh, the issue that we have. If the engine fails after rotation with the runway remaining, um, now that point right now is about halfway down the runway. Once we're about halfway down the runway, we won't have any runway remaining to land on. But if we do have runway remaining, we'll pull the pod, uh, pull the pod idle and land on the runway remaining, uh, applying full flaps. Now, obviously, the instructor will, will typically take care of this stuff. If it does ever happen, it has never happened for us. We'll keep our fingers crossed. And then uh, the instructor will know what to do. If engine fails after rotation with no runner remaining, at that point we will fly straight ahead for controlled effort of airport landing. We'll pitch for 65 knots with flaps down, or if we have flaps up, we'll pitch for 70 knots, and we'll land straight ahead. If we have altitude, depending on how much altitude we have, we'll have to look around and make sure we make the best decision at the time. It might be uh, to turn right 90 degrees onto another runway. Maybe we're crossing runway 25 right. Or, uh, or seven left, or we can make a turn back to the runway. But at that point in time, if we're making a turn back, you really want to make sure you have enough altitude so you to do that. Like I said, that's pretty hard decision to call that the impossible turn. Uh, but uh, we'll make the best decision at the time if we have altitude. Uh, that's the departure briefing. Make sure you continue on the checklist. Elevator trim is to neutral. We'll verify the wheel here is to neutral. Flaps for now are the up position for the takeoff. Avionics will switch over to the Daytona Tower. We'll push the COMP2 button right here, COMP to mic, and we'll set the rest of the avionics. Now we do need departure, but we don't need Daytona ground, and we don't need Daytona uh, Eagle Ops anymore. So we'll put our next frequency, which will be the north practice area. Again, in-flight guide says north practice area is 122.85. So we'll plug in 122.85 here. And after the practice area, we're coming right back to Daytona Beach. Uh, before we re-enter the pattern, we will have to contact, uh, get the ADIS for the weather to make sure that, uh, to verify what runways are used, what the alternative setting is, and any notams uh, for the airport. So we'll put the ADIS frequency back here, which is 132.875. So that's the avionics. The SS flight instruments, make sure the flight instruments are showing normal. So we'll go back to 3009 now. That was the uh, new weather. And uh, bugs. So the bugs will put one way one six will bug one six zero. And we'll also bug our altitude, which we've got up to three thousand. So a heading bug for the runway heading. Altitude for the altitude we're going up to. And uh, GPS availability, so we'll go to our FMS knob here, 
we'll click over to our auxiliary page, which is shown at the bottom. Then we'll take the small knob and change the GPS status. Make sure you don't touch the screen when you're doing this. We're going to make sure we have at least five green bars showing. And we'll check GPS 1 and GPS 2. We have five green bars. At that point, just hold down the clear button. And we'll go back to our map page. We're taxiing up with, as the line is moving, we'll just make sure we taxi up slowly. And once we come to complete stop, we'll continue on with our checklist. Oh, Alright, so standby flight instruments, again zero on the airspeed indicator, our standby attitude indicator matches the mean primary attitude indicator, and the altimeter setting is 3009, matches 3009 with our primary attitude uh, altimeter. Alright, cabin power 12 volt, we'll make sure that is off for now, for we'll takeoff, and cabin doors and windows are locked and closed. And parking brake is released. That's our before takeoff checklist complete. So now we'll continue going up to the runway. And when we're number one, we will contact uh, Daytona Tower for our departure clearance. Our departure, uh, our takeoff clearance. So at this point, we just have to wait now and taxi up once we get to number one. Now for the takeoff that we're going to do today, we're going to do a normal takeoff. So a couple of things you have to watch out for. When we taxi onto the runway, uh, once we clear for takeoff, we do what's called the final items. It's four basic things. We have to make sure the fuel selectors on board, put the mixture control full forward, and turn all our lights on. And since it's daytime, we don't have to turn the nav lights on, but the strobe light and the landing light, we'll put those two on. We'll take the runway, make sure it's clear on final approach before we enter the runway in case there's another aircraft. And again, runway incursion avoidance, you want to stop yourself from getting onto a runway in case there's another airplane using the runway. Air traffic control, uh, it's very seldom that they'll make a mistake, but they can make mistakes. Uh, and just like us, we can, be, we can make mistakes too, and we don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that no one, there's only one airplane on the runway at one time. So we, we'll look final curve final approach and then when we take off, once we line up on the center line, we smoothly increase full power on the throttle. As you increase full power on the throttle, you have to make sure to stay on the center line. Now, this aircraft is a single engine aircraft which propeller turns to the right. We have something called left turning tendencies. The aircraft is naturally going to want to try and turn to the left as you add full power. To stop that, you're going to have to increase your right rudder pressure. Now, as you're taking off, what you definitely want to make sure is that your heels are touching the ground and the tops of your feet, your balls of your feet, are touching the rudder pedals. Uh, so that you don't inadvertently press the brakes as we take off. So we will smoothly add full power, increase the right rudder pressure to maintain the center line. Now, if you go, if you go too far to the right, you might not want to push the left rudder just release the right rudder and that'll keep, get you back on center line and adjust the rudder pressure as you need to stay on center line. Once you get to 85, uh, sorry, 55 knots, you'll slowly increase back pressure and right rudder pressure and get the nose up to just uh, the top of the cowling touching the end of the runway so that you just barely can see the end of the runway, the departure end of the runway. Once you lift off, we'll slowly pull the nose up to the horizon and climb at a B-Y climb.